Hey, so in my last video, I talked about the four ways of knowing, propositional, procedural, perspectival, and participatory. And we discussed how what we're really going for here is a sense of belonging in the foreign language culture by transforming our sense of self so that it fits the flow of that environment. So I transform my body and my movements to fit into the flow of Spanish, right? And then in order for me to do that, I have to cultivate a situational awareness, a perspective of a native speaker or someone who fits into the Spanish flowy environment, right? And in order to do that, I need to accumulate these little micro skills or micro procedural knowings to store in my motor memory, my procedural memory, and get a greater sense of power. And maybe I can use certain propositions about those movements and those contexts in order to facilitate the growth of my procedures and my perspective and my participation. But we don't want to just clam everything into here. All right, so you can go back and watch that video. In this video, I wanna talk about how does one actually go about acquiring this skill? Now, the reason why it's called the mimic method is because mimicry is our superpower. For humans, what makes us who we are, we're able to observe a master dancer, a master wrestler, a master surfer, a master driver, a master Spanish speaker, AKA everyone who's a native speaker of Spanish. We can observe them, mimic them, mimic the way they fit into the environment by mimicking their persona, their perspective and their awareness by mimicking all the subtle movements they make, right? So what does this look like then in practice? Well, to learn a skill, we're speaking about procedural knowing here, for example, to learn a skill, there's an object that we're taking action upon, right? In the case of dancing, we're observing the dance movements and we are capturing them with our eyes, watching the dancer move her body, capturing those little movements, storing those movements in our mind, in our short-term memory, and then reproducing them with our own body. Maybe we're reproducing the footwork or the hip swing, whatever it is. I'm observing, capturing, storing, reproduce. Capture, store, reproduce. That's all it is. And if I keep doing that over and over and over again, it stores in my long-term memory. So I capture it in my short-term memory and then reproduce it over and over again until it stores in my long-term memory. It's that simple, right? If we're going to do, say, learning the guitar, I'd watch the guitar master move her hands and move her fingers, and then I would capture with my eyes, once again, what she's doing, and then I would store that into my mind and then reproduce it with my fingers and hands. Same thing, capture, store, reproduce. This is how I'm mimicking the procedures and the perspective of the guitar player. What are we doing for language? Simple. This time it's the movements of speech, which I'm now capturing with my ears, storing them in my acoustic memory, my auditory memory, and then reproducing it with the articulators of my mouth, not just my tongue, but also my soft palate, my lips, my jaw, everything. So. Capture, store, reproduce, but this time we're capturing with our ears and reproducing with our mouth. And for a lot of us here, that will be a different skill because we're not used to training our ears to do that type of uh, nuanced capturing. And we're not used to training our mouth to do that type of nuanced articulation. We all learned it with our first language. Now we have a new task of doing it with a foreign language. So now I want to demonstrate what that looks like so I have this skill of mimicking in Spanish as well as other languages. I have a general capacity to mimic, which because I train as you're gonna train in Flow School 3 and any of our programs. And I have a specific capacity, which is even better for the languages that I know. And the better I know the language, the better I can capture, store, and reproduce it on the fly. So right now I went to Easy Spanish on YouTube, which is a great, uh, YouTube series where they interview people in the streets and I'm just gonna play some random clips and you're gonna see me mimic the people speaking. Hola, hace un par de semanas Hace un par de semanas Harry y Sara del equipo de Barcelona del equipo de Barcelona grabaron un video en el que le preguntaron 
grabaron un video en lo que preguntaron a las personas acerca de los... A las personas acerca... So what am I doing right now? I'm capturing and I'm storing it. Británicos. Británicos, right? So what I did there is I captured Británicos. I stored it in my mind and was reproducing it. Británicos, Británicos, Británicos. And then whoop, into my mouth, Británicos. Do some more of that. Pueden ver el video aquí. Pueden ver el video aquí, right? So that is what's going on. I'm capturing acoustic information through my ears, putting it into my mind, replaying it in my mind, and then reproducing it with my mouth. This is a skill that I cultivated and developed. And this skill um, is the fundamental skill of learning a language, right? Right now I'm just capturing these sounds, only layer for meaning, how do you make meaning of it, is basically look at the greater context and then see what, how it applies to that greater context. And you'll also notice as well, I'm also capturing a little bit what her facial gestures are and the other parts of her, of her movement of her body. Right? So this is what you're going to train. This is the first skill you're going to cultivate. And the measure of your skill um, is in these areas. One by one here. You have the object. So right now I captured a certain object, those little bits of speech. But if I played that you know, for 10 minutes and I captured the whole thing, and I wouldn't be able to reproduce the whole thing because my skill's not that good. Right? So the complexity of the object is the first variable determining the challenge that you're dealing with, right? So how many syllables are there? Uh, how quickly, sorry, not how quickly, how many syllables are there? Um, how much noise is there in the background, et cetera, et cetera? That is the complexity of the thing you're capturing. And then there's also the speed at which it's coming at you, right? So I can actually reduce the complexity of this challenge. You're not gonna be at this skill most likely, uh, at this level of skill yet. So what we can do is adjust the challenge to meet your skill level. So if I go back to the speech, I can go to YouTube here and then put it at 0.5 and then try to mimic it again, see how much easier it is. Personas acerca de los británicos. Acerca de los británicos. Pueden ver el video. Pueden ver, pueden ver el video. Aquí. Aquí. Algunos de ustedes, algunos de ustedes, nos preguntaron de as, nos preguntaron de as. Now, I want you to just note that what I'm doing here, yes, I know Spanish and I know the words, but what I'm doing, I'm not even really paying attention to the words, which is what most people will do, which is what trips them up. I'm paying attention to the movements as captured through my ears. And... Same as I was watching a dance teacher and she's moving her shoulders or her hips in a certain way, I'm just watching those movements with my eyes. I'm watching these movements with my ears and capturing it. I'm not paying attention to words on paper in my head or even meanings and definitions. I'm just capturing the movements the same way a dancer captures the movements of the feet or a guitar player captures the movements of the fingers and hands, which a musician also can do using just her ears, right? That's the skill you're training here. Do not be intimidated by my skill in it. I trained it, you will train it, and you will get better and better at it, which is to say, you'll be able to do higher complexity at higher speed with greater accuracy and greater ease. So you might have noticed a couple of those phrases, uh, I tripped up a little bit. So my, I didn't make the exact movement at the exact right time. Um, and I tried to correct it because it wasn't as easy. So if I get better at it, then I don't need five tries to do it. I want to do it in three tries, two tries, one try. Um, and it takes less and less effort, conscious attention and effort to do. So the skill we're developing here is the ability to capture speech of greater complexity and speed, capture, store, and reproduce it, rather, with more accuracy and with more ease. That's all we're doing, and that's what we're training here. So to this question of complexity, last thing I want to share with you how do we reduce the complexity? We already slowed it down, but if you're new to the language, even just capturing something like this. Ser un episodio similar a ser, ser un episodio similar. That's an actually very complex. Man, it's so complex what I'm doing with my tongue right now. Ser un episodio. 
episodio similar. That super crazy fine motor articulation I'm doing with my tongue and my lips and my jaw, that's very complex if you've never done anything like that before, if you're new to Spanish, it's a new movement, right? So what do we do then to reduce that complexity? Well, we break the speech down into its component pieces or layers. So what I'm visualizing right here are all the relevant layers of speech that matter, not including like the tone of your voice for you know, a, a, you know, a deeper voice or a more feminine voice, whatever it may be. I'm just talking about what makes this language you know, this meaning different from this meaning. We're looking at fundamentally two layers, melody. I call it melody and movement, you can call it articulation. Um, the technical term for this is pr prosody, uh, P-R-O-S-O-D-Y, prosody. I don't know how to pronounce it actually. Prosody, prosody, whatever. And um, the articulation of the phonemes, the, um, the phonemic articulation of the vowels and the consonants. But because I like alliteration, melody and movement is how you can think of it. And the melody is the foundational layer. That's what we're going to start with in our training. And this breaks down into rhythm and pitch. Rhythm breaks down into timing and stress. The most fundamental layer of not just language, but dance, surfing, jujitsu, everything is timing. All skills are fundamentally making movements at the right time. All right. If you mess up, it's because you made the wrong movement at the right time or the right movement at the wrong time or the wrong movement at the wrong time, right? It's the only possibilities you got. So timing is what matters here. That's the first thing you'll train. So this phrase I have here, anyone in our Spanish program will know it. It's a notorious phrase, beloved and loathed by many. And we have these things repeating over and over and over again. This is from Flow School 2. So you listen to this phrase. Nunca lo volví a ver. 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 Okay, so this phrase over and over and over again, we're repeating it so you become familiar with it and we reduce all the complexity just by having something familiar and it starts to become, you know, more clear in your mind. And then the first thing we're going to be just trying to mimic is the timing of it. Ba, 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 ba. Hear it again. Nunca lo volví a ver. 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 Cool. So you're able to capture at least one layer of speech, the timing, store that in your mind, and reproduce it with your lips. But we also use other parts of our body. Right? Well, all we're doing is reproducing it in some form or another with our body, with accuracy, that's what matters. And at first it's difficult, but over and over again, you can hear any type of speech. We go back to our YouTube video and you can practice that. Uh, I'll put it at full speed again. I'll put it at 0.75. Cerca de los estadounidenses. Así que ahora estoy aquí en México. That's the timing, right? I'm just capturing that timing. Once again, I'm not paying attention to the words. I'm just paying attention to the timing of the syllables, right? Uh, next layer we have is the stress. So uh, I'll keep this phrase here. That's the higher emphasis on certain syllables versus others. That's important to kind of attune yourself to because it reduces the amount of effort your mind needs to do to process speech by just paying attention to like the exaggerated or emphasized moments. Next we have pitch. Right, listen to that again. Nunca lo volví a ver. I should have a slow version of this, but... Nunca lo volví a ver. Nunca lo volví a ver. So if we combine all this together, these... At the timing... Then we get... And what we have here is just the melody. So the very first kind of skill where you'll be practicing to really get engaged and in flow with the language is just being able to mimic 
the melody layer, which is very important. A lot of information is contained in the melodic layer. For example, question, emotion, all that kind of stuff. So it's really important. And the more you train and entrain yourself, uh, fit yourself once again, to be aware of the timing and the melody of speech, that skill of attention and listening and capturing and whatnot, the easier time you'll have entering into things and picking up on more details, right? So that's the first thing we'll be doing in our training. And Nunca lo volví a ver. one more point I wanted to make. Oh, finally, once we have that melody, what we'll do later on is now we'll get into the movement piece. How are we moving my tongue? How are we moving our lips? First, we have to become aware of all the different articulators in our mouth, the lips and the tongue, all that kind of stuff. Become aware of it so we can have control over it, greater conscious control over it. If I say, do you move your tongue up? You should be able to go, uh, yeah, all that kind of stuff. And with that greater control, those movements, then we can combine it with the melody. So I have the n, u, n, k, a, l, o, v, o, l, v, i, a, v, e, r, nun, ka, lo, vol, vi, a, ver. Nunca lo volví a ver. Nunca lo volví a ver. Nunca lo volví a ver. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm reducing the complexity of my task by taking one layer at a time. And then one, once each layer has been integrated into my procedural memory, so it no longer takes cognitive effort, aka it's easy for me to do, then I can start integrating all of it right? Until I get Nunca lo volví a ver. perfectly reproduced exactly as the native speaker. And you might say to yourself, okay, wow, I spent so much time learning how to just say this random phrase in Spanish. What was the point of that? Well, Nunca lo volví a ver. uses the same movement. There's a, there's a finite set of movement patterns and melodic patterns found in the Spanish language. And by integrating this one phrase, I've integrated that whole set of patterns, as well as the ability in general, the universal ability to pay attention to timing, stress, and pitch, and movement in general, which then means that when I now come back to an environment of new phrases, Cerca de esto. Cerca Vamos. de esto. Vamos. <laughs> sí, ¿no? Tratamos de porque ya ves que a veces... Tratamos de porque ya ves... No nos entendemos y eso. Entendemos y eso. Right? Boom. That is where the ability comes from. So that's what you're going to be doing in this program, starting with timing, working your way up to stress and pitch, integrating melody, becoming aware of all the movements first and foremost, and then learning how to coordinate them, integrate them. Bit by bit, you'll get higher complexity at a higher level of speed with a higher level of accuracy and a higher level of ease. If you just keep on flowing, keep on doing the training and doing it right, the process will start to reshape you and re so that your physical body and movement and senses will be attuned to the environment of your target language. This is what it means to cultivate and acquire procedural knowing so that they can later then on be turned into a perspectival and participatory knowing. All right, cool. Hope you enjoyed that.